get in our message. Just want to give our guests a hand this morning. We've got several guests. So glad you all here. I pray you feel at home. If somebody doesn't treat you right, let me know. <laughs> I try to say, oh, that won't be, you don't have to worry about that. We, we, we practice on trying to be friendly. Amen. This morning we're gonna. Uh, if we had a title for a message, we call it the Valley of Crisis. And uh, we know uh, in geography, in the lay of our land, uh, in our country, not so not so much here in Florida. We uh, we live in the lowlands. I, I think the highest place in Florida is um, what 300 foot or 370. If it's that high, it's not very high. But we know parts of our country we have mountains. And one of the things that our family loves to do, we like to get off a few days and go up to North Carolina, the mountains there, the Smoky Mountains. And, and if we can't get up that far, sometimes we go to Pine Mountain there in Georgia. And if you're from Florida, that's a big mountain, you know what I mean? Because we're used to the lowlands, we're used to the flats. But uh, our country, it's made up, it's diverse. It has the mountains, and then with mountains are valleys. And uh, we have areas that uh, here in the east are pretty lush and green, and then out in the west, they have some places of desert that uh, are, are totally different. And that's the way life is made up. There's, there's the ups and downs. You know, we would like to stay on the highs all the time, but we're just, that's not the way it is in the life that we live. I don't believe uh, God intended for it to be that way. There's times when we have the ups and the downs, just like you have the daylight and the dark. You know, in heaven, it's going to be a place of eternal light. There'll yes. be no night. But we, while we're here, it's the, the, it's the daylight, it's the dark. It's the times of sunshine, it's the darkness of midnight. And so, uh, uh, we find ourselves again. Uh, the geography is a is a, a is a, a parallel with life itself. Again, we have the good times. We have what we call the mountain experiences, and then we have the valley experiences. And so we're going to talk about Jehoshaphat and the children of Israel. They they stepped into a valley of crisis, and you know uh, again we like to stay on the mountaintop, but it's in the valley that we find out who we are and what we believe in. It's in the valley where we grow. It's in the valley where we get a greater knowledge of who God is. Yes. And so uh, it's necessary. It's necessary that we go through these valleys. And so uh, one of the places that we visit in Pine Mountain is called uh, Dowell's Knob. It's a, a little place where you get a good overlook of the territory. And it's a place that President Roosevelt went off and he, has a, he had a, the, what they call the little, uh, little white houses there in that area. And uh, that was a refuge for him. That was a place where he uh, came. Matter of fact, that's where he passed away in that very place, in, the, in, the, in the, the little White House, which is close to this. But he would go up to this knob, and he would uh, go there, and they'd have a picnic. And, you know, uh, no doubt, uh, again, during, during his presidency, our, our country was in the, a state of depression uh, that had uh, gripped uh, particularly the whole nation, but particularly here in the southeast. And then later in his presidency, we know that we uh, were into World War II. A lot of pressure, a lot of tension was in his life. And he found a refuge up there. And you know what? That mountain experience helped him to get back into the valley, get to the, where he had to make hard decisions that affected the nation and affected uh, families and young men and young women for the rest of their life. And so uh, we see the necessity of mountains and valley experiences. But today we're going to talk about the valley, the valley of crisis. And if you have your Bibles, we're going to be in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. We're going to be covering several verses, but we're going to just uh, read two to start with this morning. And we're in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, and we'll do, read verse 3, and then we'll drop down to verse 22. 2 Chronicles. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And then ver dropping down to verse 22, there's a lot between these few verse, these verses, but uh, we're going to cover it. Verse 22, Now when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set, set ambushments against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. Thank you for standing for God's word. And you know, as we... Uh, uh, in our time of worship, um, I pray that you are blessed as much as I am uh, through the songs. And you know, if you're in a place in life where one of these songs uh, speaks to you, you know, Brother Greg can help you get a link to that if you're not already aware of that song. But the last song we sung in particular, uh, we're actually going to put that in message form. This was uh, this is something that God orchestrated. We just sung it for the first time this morning, 
And you know, it's just, it, it's just, this is, I believe, is a message that somebody here needs to hear because this is, this is what the message is all about this morning. And so we find in uh, Chronicles uh, chapter 20, 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 3, where the Bible says that Jehoshaphat feared and he set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judea. And we, the situation is that he had, the news that came to Jehoshaphat, there was a huge army. The Moabites and the Ammonites and those from Mount Seir were coming against him. They were coming toward Jerusalem. And the army was about 50 miles away at the time that he received the news. That's about three days out. And so if you're, uh, all of a sudden you have uh, news that an army is coming against you, three days is not very long to prepare. And so the Bible says that Jehoshaphat's first reaction was fear. And you know, I've had news, I've heard a call, I've had uh, things come to my uh, attention that brought fear. The first reaction was fear. I mean, I just felt it gripped, I just felt paralyzed. And you know what, whenever that fear comes to us, uh, we uh, it just shuts us down. We're just uh, those those saying the deer in the headlight looks. We don't we can't think creatively. We can't even th sometimes we can't think positively. Uh, we can't think clearly. And this is where Jehoshaphat is. And you know that's a that's a natural emotion. But I'm thankful that we do not have to live in fear right. day in and day out. Amen. Yeah. We get there, but we don't have to get stuck there. We can uh, there's a there's a there's something that we can do to get out of that fear. This news is overwhelming, unexpected. And you know, uh, again, I've had, I've had that happen to me as you have. The news of an accident or a doctor's report or a change coming in our place of employment. But you know, Jehoshaphat did not allow fear to di dictate his next move. And again, fear uh, shuts down uh, faith. Fear and faith can't exist together. So we've got to get rid of one of them. And so, you know, uh, that brings us to this question. What do you do uh, whenever you're facing great opposition? There's, you're here this morning, and you're, you're facing opposition in your life. In other words, uh, there's opposition from where you are to where you, the next step that you need to take. Or you're here this morning, and something that you have depended on, someone you've depended on, something that you've trusted for a long period of time is taken away, and that can bring fear to your life. Or you're in a situation where it's just a no-win situation. How many's ever been in a no-win situation? There's going to be, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. This is not going to work out well. And you know what? That's a time when fear takes root and our faith begins to dwindle. But in those circumstances, we have to remind ourselves what the Scripture says. That's foundational. Amen. That's what we can stand on this morning is God's Word. The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear. Amen. Yes. So we know this fear is not from God. Right. Sometimes it's a wake-up call for us to, to reach out to Him. But we know that, yes, it comes, but it doesn't have to stay. Right. We need to get it out of our life because we cannot carry on in the goodness of God. We cannot taste the goodness of God if we're bound by fear. <laughs> He's not given us a spirit of fear, but what? But of power and of love and a sound mind. And we know that fear paralyzes. It takes away the power. That fear uh, takes away uh, that love because whenever we're uh, in fear, many times it's self-preservation. We're thinking about us and us only. And we know that that fear uh, takes away that sound mind. We can, I, cannot, I cannot think clearly if I'm flood, my mind is flooded with fear. So when I know that fear comes into my heart, I have to be, I know this is not, this is not God's will for me to, to carry on in this fear. So what did Jehoshaphat do when he received news that, which brought fear? Jehoshaphat prayed. Yes. Amen. Jehoshaphat prayed. And so, you know, prayer is not our last resort. Uh, we are people of prayer. This is, we pray daily. We pray weekly. I'm telling you, as I've said before, this little time in, in the service where we pause to pray, we bring those requests to God. Many times we hear a testimony of not only in the congregation but in a, on a report. It's just, it just it's food for the soul for yes. me. It's just a time this congregation begins to pray for these needs. And we have the confidence that the God of heaven hears. And we have the confidence that God not only has answered prayer, but he will continue to answer prayer. Can we give God the glory for that this morning? Because prayer is our weapon. And you know, there's a principle. Whatever we feed, what? It grows. And whatever we starve, what? It dies. And so it is with our fear and our faith. Whenever we feed our faith, it will grow. And again, if we feed our fear, what happens to it? It will begin to grow. How many's ever fed their fears? 
We, fed our, we feed our fears through worry. We feed our fears about what could happen. We feed our uh, fears about how uh, things in our past didn't work out like we thought they should have. And so we feed our fears that way. We think about that worst case scenario. Amen? But we have to feed our faith also. We know that in spite of what, come what may, we know that God is faithful. Yes. Come what may, God is just. Come what may, God is in control. Amen. Yes, Come what may, I know that God loves us this yes, morning. Amen. Yes, amen. And so we got to feed our faith. Whatever we feed grows. Whatever we starve dies. Yes. So what do we do? We starve that fear. Yes. We know that God is faithful. We, just as we sung this morning, we know that God is bigger. He's better and he's stronger. Amen. Yes, God is bigger. Amen better and stronger. Amen. And God loves us too much. Amen. To, 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 to not be in our life. Amen. Not to be involved in our life when we call on him. He yes. loves us. Amen. Yes, he does. So Jehoshaphat gives us an example of how we feed our faith and starve our fears. Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat prayed, but not only did he pray, but he called on the people to pray and fast. He was in a position where he could call the people. He was, by the way, he was the king. And he could call the people to prayer. And he did. And he called the people to fast. And what is fasting? Fasting is laying aside, in this case, food, which is necessary so that uh, we can uh, focus on God. It's, it means that we're serious about God. We're serious about hearing from God. And you know, yes, it often is food. But you know what? We live in a time where I believe it would do us good to fast from our electronics for a period of time. Amen. It'll help clear your mind. Amen. It'll help us focus on Him. And that's what fasting is all about so that we can focus on Him. We lay aside. God is as necessary as food is. I'm going to lay it aside. I'm going to take this time that I would normally eat. I'm going to take this time that I would normally prepare a meal. And I'm going to give it to you. And Lord, I need to hear you. I need to hear you. Amen. Yes. So much that I'm willing to lay aside our, that food. And I don't know about you, but whenever we go without uh, food for a period of time, we physically get weak. Amen. We're not as physically strong as we normally are when we eat regular. And you know what? We, we acknowledge that, God, I am weak, yes. but you are strong. Amen. 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 And so we say, you know what? Here I am, Lord. I, I can't make a move without you. And so fasting is necessary. Jesus said, not if you fast. He said, when you fast. To get in your prayer closet. Wash yourself up. And let not, this is something between you and God. In other words, it's something necessary that we should practice in our life. It help, that's a discipline that helps uh, us serve God in a greater manner. To help us yield ourselves to Him. Amen? And so the king recognized that um, he, re he, he was able to call on the, 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 uh, the people to pray with him. The nation to pray with him. And so what does that have to do with us, Brother Chris? It has to do with this, that we are a part of a church body. Yes. You have it at the end of your, uh, at your fingertips, you can have this whole congregation praying for your need. And I think that's important, amen, that we not only pray uh, individually, but we pray collectively, amen? And so that's why it's so important to be a part of a church body. And you know what? There's a lot of negative news out there about church, amen? I know about it. I've heard about it. I've, unfortunately, I've witnessed it. But let's say something positive about the church. We are a body. Yes. And together when we pray collectively, things happen. Yes, Amen. Yes. We've had too many testimonies week by week. We've had people that would have been dead a year ago, but prayers went up. We've yes. seen those that had great needs that today they're delivered. We've seen uh, just more things than I can mention this morning. Yes. Why? Because of prayer. We've seen a very high risk pregnancy this morning. And we got two little boys running around yes. that God's help. Yeah. 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 Because the doctor said they were here is because people bound together and it was God's will yes. and it brought it about. Amen. It's through prayer. We no other way. It's through prayer. Yes. Amen. Yes. And so we receive it. We're here this morning. We have received the goodness and the blessings of God because of prayer, because of collective prayer. Yes. That's why it's important for us to be a part. One of the reasons we should be a part of a church. Amen. Yes. Healings, direction, meeting all kinds of needs, moving mountains. And in so many ways. And so Jehoshaphat was not paralyzed by his fear. Rather he had acknowledged God's great power in his prayer. Let me just read that prayer this morning. It picks up in verse 6 of chapter 20. And said, this is Jehoshaphat, he's praying. He said, O Lord, our, o Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand is there not power and might so that no one Excuse me. So that no one is able to withstand you. Are you not our God who drove it? Listen to this. 
Are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to your descendants of Abraham, your friend, forever? And they dwell in it and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying, If disaster comes upon us, sore, judgment, pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this temple and in your presence, for your name is in this temple, yes. and cry out to you in our affliction, and you will hear and say. Yes. And now, here are the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who you would not allow, would not let Israel invade them when they come out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and did not destroy them. And here they are, rewarding us by coming to throw us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. O oh, our God, will you not judge him? For we have no power. Listen to this. Have you ever been here? We have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. For we do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Yes. Amen. Have you ever been there? Lord, I do not know what to do, but my eyes are on you. Amen. He reminded God that we are the nation, the children of Israel. We're your people. Yes. You promised us this nation. Uh, this area, this this piece of geography, this this uh, land. And when we came out of Egypt, it was you that drove out the inhabitants. They didn't want to leave. It was by your hand. It was just, well, this is where it happened in the promised land. And now this bunch is coming to drive us out. Lord, you're the God of heaven, and who can stand against you? What is that telling us this morning? We need to stand upon the promises of God. Yes, Amen. Amen. When fear comes, you said, Lord, we know this fear is not from you, but you give power and of love and a sound mind. Yes. We can stand on a promise. Amen. Yes. And that's what it's talking about this morning. Jehoshaphat recited how God gave the children of Israel. He gave credit where credit was due. I'm here this morning by your grace. Amen. Yes. What I have experienced is but because of your mercy and your grace and, uh, and and by your hand in my life. That's why I have what I have this morning. Yes. And that's what he was telling them. And by his hand, he drove those out that were originally there. The king recognized it was God that because of God, they occupied the land. And by prayer, the king stood on the promise of God. And that's an example of what we do this morning when fear comes a knocking. Amen. When the circumstances is too great, we remind God, I'm standing on your promises. Yes. Amen. God, I'm your kid. Amen. Yes. That's all you got to say. God, I'm your kid. And I know you're going to stand up. Amen. Yes. That's a really nice prayer that the king uh, prayed. And I may not be that eloquent, but I can say, God, I'm your child this morning. Amen. Yes. And I know that you'll never leave me nor forsake yes. me. I know that you are in heaven and you here and you know where I'm at. Yes. And that's how we stand on the promises of God. The Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 and 7 the apostle Paul he knew what he had troubles. He had more troubles than we can mention in, in a short time but this is what he told the Philippians he said be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. Do not worry about anything. That's what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. But by but, but everything by prayer and and supplication with thanksgiving. And that's what the king did. He was thankful for what God had done. He was thankful for the way that he had provided for the nation. And he was thankful. Then he let his request be known to God. He said, hey, they're coming. They're more than we can count. We cannot stand against them. We're not, we're not big enough, but God, you are. Yes. And he made his request known to God. And then it says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will God guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 We can face Amen. the enemy. We can face tomorrow if we have a peace of mind. Amen. Yes. Now we're going to come unravel at the uh, we're going to come unravel at the at the scene, so to speak, if we allow fear to dominate our life. Amen. If we roll over, what if? What if this happens? What if this happens? What if the economy uh, continues to get worse? What if gas gets six dollars a gallon? What if food continues to get higher? What if I lose my job? What if my health fails? And a thousand other things. Instead, you say, you know what, God, you got this. I'm going to approach all these worries with you in mind, knowing. That not, I'm not, this worry is not from you. I'm going to put it in you, on you, God. I'm going to cast my care on you, yes. God. And you're going to give me the direction. I do not know what to do, but my eyes are on you. Amen. Amen. My eyes are on you. Amen. 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 Jehoshaphat was certainly alarmed, but he was not overtaken by fear. And yes, there are times when we get alarmed. But again, we do not have to be dominated by fear. He took his fear straight to the Lord. Amen. It's all right to tell God you're scared. He already knows. Amen. It's all right. Lord, I am scared to death. But Lord, I know you're my keeper. And help me to overcome this fear. 
by trusting in you. Whatever you feed grows and whatever you starve dies. And you know, you may be here this morning and fear is not the thing that you're dealing with this. But you know what? Whatever that emotion is that's keeping us away from God, whatever that emotion is, uh, whether it be anger, whether it be jealousy, or whether it be regret, or whether it be shame, you fill in that blank, that same one. We take it to God and we say, Lord, here I am. This is this is where I'm at this morning, but I know this is not of you. This is not an emotion you want to you want to dictate my life, but rather I give praise to you, God. Amen. You brought me this far. I mean, I'm your child, and God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna press on. Amen. Yes. Amen. We have to pray till we get that peace. We may not, you know, you're facing some questions. You're here this morning and you're facing some questions that you do not have an answer for. And I'm not telling you that God will answer every question, but I can tell you that God will give you his peace. Amen. Amen. And then we can deal with the question when the time comes. But I know when, the, when we don't have the answer, he will give us that peace to carry on. Amen. Amen. Jehoshaphat prayed until something happened. He did not know what to do, so he kept his eyes on God. The, whole, the king and the whole assembly stood before God. Listen to me. They stood before God until they got an answer. Yes. And you know what? That's so key. We mentioned a little bit of, about this last week. We acknowledge God. We cry out to God. But sometimes we do not wait for the answer. We do not wait until he gives us that peace. We do not wait until, and I'm not telling you he's going to give you uh, a, uh, no, no direction for the next week. But you know what? He can give us the direction for the next step. Yes. And you know what? That's what? That's how our faith is cultivated. When we take that step and God uh, gives us that assurance and that peace. And we take another step and God gives us that assurance and that peace. We got to just keep on plodding along. Yes. But then you know what? The Spirit of God moved on a, on a prophet and he spoke to the congregation because of prayer, because of fasting, because they waited on God to get an answer. Yes. And that picks up in verse 15. This is the prophet speaking and he said, Listen, all of you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you do not be afraid or dismayed because of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours. But whose is it? Oh, it's God. God's. Amen. Somebody needs to hear this yes. morning. You're in a battle and it's overwhelming. But the, just listen to the spirit of the Lord. He's speaking to you this morning. The battle's not yours. Amen. It's mine. Thus saith the Lord. Amen. Tomorrow, listen. Tomorrow you will go against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz. And you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You need not fight. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go up against them, for the Lord is with you. Amen? Amen. So what did the Spirit of God speak to him? He didn't say run. He said go on up. Go on up and confront them. He says you don't have to worry up to fight, but you got to position yourself. And I'm telling you this morning, there are times when people come up against you. Amen? And I'm telling you, there are times whenever you do not have to fight, but you have to get in position. Amen? You have to be in the place where God wants you to be. Amen? That's where the blessing was. In other words, had they not stepped out, the victory would not have come. They had to take that step. That's a scary step. Amen? But we have to know uh, whenever we're not capable, uh, whenever the enemy is too great, then we but we have to we know that God's going to win the battle, but we still have to position ourselves. Amen. They couldn't uh, go to the backside and crawl up in a cave. They had to position themselves, and there God would move. And that's what I want to remind us this morning. If you're facing fear, if you're in the valley of crisis. We have to get ourselves in that position. Sometimes that position is in prayer. Sometimes that position is humble ourselves. Some that, sometimes that position is yielding ourselves. Sometimes that, and all the time, it's obedience. We have to obey the God, obey God. And you know what? That's not always an easy thing to do. But we have to position ourselves because God's going to do His. He's going. If we'll do the easy thing, God will do the good hard thing. Amen. Yes, Amen. Amen. If they just get in position, if they show up and get in position, God is going to win the battle. Yes. Amen. So that's what happens when the news is overwhelming. Amen? And when there, yeah, there are times when we have to persevere. We have to chip things out. We have to do it little by little. But this is a battle that's overwhelming. This is a battle that's beyond their resources. This battle is beyond their ability. Ability, And so you know what? That's when God picks it up. Yes, Amen? Yes, Amen. Yes, he yes. did it then. He'll do it for you. Yes, God is faithful. He told them not to fear. Tomorrow, face the issue. 
We've got to face our battle. We've got to face our giant. Amen. David defeated Goliath, but he had to face him. Amen. He didn't come in from the backside. He faced him nose to nose, and he obeyed God. There are times when we want to fight. There's a time for that. But this time, remember, uh, whenever Jesus was uh, arrested by that multitude, and Peter, what did he do? He whipped out the sword. The same guy was going to uh, back down to a little girl just a little later on. He whipped out his sword, and, and Peter, uh, Jesus said, Put down your sword, Peter. This is not the time. Those that live by the sword are going to die by the sword. Now is not the time. Put your sword up. And so there are times when, you know what, we want to, we want to fight. And there are times to fight, but this is not the time because we have a tendency to want to fight dirty, amen, especially when we're the underdog, right? We're wanting to do something unethical, but that's not what God wants us to do. He wants us to get ourselves in position and stand still and see what happens. This is God's method. Don't be fearful. It's not our battle. Face our issues and don't run. We can't run from it. When the problem is overwhelming, stand on God's promises. Yeah. When you don't know where to start, stand on God's promises. When you don't know where to start, position yourself in a place where God can help you. Amen? Yes. Yeah. You know, this is our tendency. We ask God to change the circumstances when, listen to me, we want God to change the circumstances when God wants to use the, change, the circumstances to change us. What are you talking about, Brother Chris? What if Joe, God had kept Joseph out of jail? He could have, but he didn't. But he worked, he'd done a work in Joseph. He got Joseph to a point where his brothers, listen to me, his brothers sold him. He sold, they sold him as a slave. And you know what? It would have been real easy whenever he stepped in that position to have been vengeful to those brothers. It had been real easy to say, you guys are out of bread? Well, just get used to it. Because if you hadn't sold me, I might have, if you hadn't sold me as a slave, like an animal, I probably would have helped you. But you know what? When Joseph was in that prison, when Joseph was in part of himself, God was doing a work in his life. Yes. So when he got to the point where those brothers came back and the flesh would have said, you guys hit the high road back, because I'm, there's no help here. You can just starve to death with everybody else. But what did Joseph do? He showed mercy to them. Yes, he he revealed who he was. And he offered forgiveness to them. Yes. Amen? Amen? God used those circumstances that were difficult to, to, to mold Joseph into the person that he wanted him to be. And so you're in some difficult circumstances. You're asking God, why is it that I'm going through this? Because God is using those circumstances to mold you into the person that he wants you to be. Amen? Amen. Yeah. What about uh, Daniel out of the lion's den? God could have kept him out of the lion's den. But you know what? Uh, he made a stand. They said, "Just you, Daniel, if you, you got to stop praying. Daniel sounds like the world we're living in. Daniel, you got to stop praying. And I believe it was for 40 days or 42 days or for a period of time. It's uh, been a day or two since I read that. And you know what? He could have laid low and said, well, I'll just quit praying for 40-something days and this thing will pass. No, he continued to pray. They threw him in the lion's den, but that's not the end of the story. Who was there ahead of him? The angel of the Lord was there ahead of him. And he closed the mouth of the, the lions. And so the next day when the king said, Oh, Daniel, where are you at? Before he, got, before he could get there, Daniel said, Oh, king, live forever. In other words, hey, king, I'm all right. The God that I serve is delivered. And you're under, you, wish, you just wonder why I'm in this tight spot. You wonder why it seems like the world's closing in. You wonder why it seems like you're in a den of lions. Because God's going to be there with you. Yes. And those onlookers are going to say, they should have done went down by now. They should have sunk by now. But no, they are. They're in there praising God. Oh, Amen. Yeah. God used the circumstances to make Daniel the man that he wanted him to be. And I, I challenge you this morning. Don't cry about your circumstances. Just give God praise. And I'm, I'm saying, I'm not saying that's easy. I'm just okay. saying that's what we got to do. We got to lift up our voice and say, God, I don't understand these circumstances, but God, you've got to work. Amen. Yes. You've got something that you're doing in my life. And Lord, let it be so. Let it be so. Let you bring, God, we pray that glory comes out of these circumstances. Yes. What about the three Hebrew children that were, uh, they were, the, the day we came, whenever the, the King Nebuchadnezzar, he had that great statue. Man, he had a lot of money invested in that statue. And he wanted everybody to bow. Whenever you hear the band crank up, we want you to bow. But you know what? Those three boys threw a shadow. Three. Every, that boy threw a shadow. You know what? And the false accusers come up there and said, these guys did not bow, old king. And the Bible says that the king was so angry that his face turned. In other words, his, his countenance changed. You've been around people that are so angry. It's a good time to, to back off when their face changes. Anyway, he was so angry. And by the way, when you read uh, the book of Jeremiah, you read where they did throw people in that furnace. This is not something that he was 
uh, say that, that might happen. This is how they handled people that they uh, wanted to get rid of anyway. They put the three Hebrew children in a furnace, and what happened? There was somebody already there. The fourth guy was there. Amen? amen. So if you're in the furnace this morning, amen, know there's another one with you. Amen? Yes, he wants right. you to stand. And you know what? The, the ropes that they had them bound up was off of them. They, them, them guys, the guys pulled them out of there. They couldn't even smell smoke. You, you, you don't have to be around a grill five minutes and you smell like smoke. Amen? Yes. But it had no power over them. Amen? Yes. And so that's what I'm telling you this morning. Allow the circumstances to do what God wants it to do in your life. Amen. God used these impossible situations to show his prayer, to show his power through prayer. Yes, it came about by prayer. God used these impossible situations to show his power. And then the Bible tells us that Jehoshaphat worried, uh, worship. Amen. Instead of worry, worship. Amen. Jehoshaphat worship. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 18, it says, And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judea and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Then the Levites, or the children of the Kothanites, and of the children of the Korahites, stood up to praise the Lord, God of Israel, with voices loud and high. Amen? That's what we just came out of, a time when we lift up our voices loud and high. Jehoshaphat worshiped with a great army approaching Jerusalem. The king led the people into humble worship. Amen? They had an army coming. He wasn't stacking up provisions. He wasn't stacking up bar uh, 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 a guard against it. You know, a, a barricade. barricade. Thank you, Sister Tammy. A barricade. He was worshiping. Instead of an organizing a group of elite soldiers, they assembled a worship team to lead the army. How many times has a worship team leading the army won a victory? Well, one time it did. Amen? He sent out the, the guitar players and he sent out the, the, the horn players and he sent out the singers ahead of the army. And guess what happened? God brought a victory yes. because they worshiped. Yes. Right. Is that key to us this morning? Yes. yes. That's what it's all about this morning. God wants us to worship him. Amen. We can spend a whole lifetime worrying about what could happen, what might happen, what if, what if. But what happens if we turn out worry around and just worship God? I don't understand uh, all about this, Lord. I don't know what uh, tomorrow holds. I just know who holds tomorrow. I don't know where I'll be um, this time next week, but I know you have been with me all the way. You've been faithful. You've never left me or forsaken me. Every time I've cried out, you've had an answer. Yes. Amen. I know that tomorrow when we step into it, that sun rises in the east, you're already there. God, you've already made provision for it. Amen. Jehoshaphat worship. They sang praises to the Lord for his mercy endures forever. This is uh, in, uh, in Psalms 106, verses 1 through 3. This is part of what they cried out to God. Maybe uh, at the original time they may have sung the whole song, but we have a few uh, verses in, in um, Chronicles there. It says, praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. How many of y'all are thankful for God's mercy? Amen. 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 Yeah, give the Lord a hand. can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can declare all his praise? Blessed are those who keep justice and he who does righteousness at all times. Amen. In other words, they sang God's praises to God. And the worshiper, they sang uh, praises and God set ambushments against the enemy of his people. The confusion caused them to fight among themselves until they destroyed each other. Amen. So God had a plan. It didn't matter how big the army was. They just had to obey him. And you know what? No matter what's against you this morning, no matter how high it's stacked up, no matter how many bright minds are against you, no matter how big the devil is and, and how uh, all his little imps and demons and all his little people that he uses to carry out his work, it doesn't matter how big they are. Our God is bigger. Yes. He's stronger. Yes. And he's greater. Amen? Amen? Our God is bigger. He's greater. Oh. And he's stronger. Amen? Yes. Amen? Yeah, give him a hand this morning. He's bigger. Yes. And he's greater. So if you're in a valley of crisis, you're in a valley of fear, of pain, or grief, we find here in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, it gives us a way through that valley. Amen? Yes, we can grow out of this instead of, of, of being disconnected with God. We can grow out of this instead of, of, of feeding our fear. We can feed our faith this yes. morning. Amen? It gives us the how Jehoshaphat, well, how he handled those circumstances. Yes, 
He was fearful, but he didn't stay fearful. He prayed. And then that prayer led to worship. And then that prayer and that worship led to a victory over the yes. great army where God received the glory. Yes. And so if you're here this morning and you relate to what we're talking about this morning, can I remind you, yes, we're, we're human. There's times when we have fear, but don't let it take root. Shove, shove it on out of the way. Push it on out of the way whenever we begin to pray and we cry out and we feed our faith. We have to remind ourselves, God, you are greater than all greater than all my problems, yes. greater than anything. Greater is he who's within me than he that is within the world. Yes. Amen. Yes. The same Jesus has said, just as sure as I go, I'm coming back. And if I go, I'm going to send a comfort. And that comfort is here this morning yes, to help is. give me the strength and the knowledge of what I need to overcome the obstacles of the day. Amen. There's a way to defeat our fear and anxiety. We do not have to be bound by fear and anxiety. And I know there's a million and one things to worry about in this world that we live in, but we know that we do not have to be uh, dictated and dominated by fear. That's of the devil. That's a tool of the devil. That's bondage of the devil. Amen? Yes. Remember, whatever we feed, it grows. Feed your faith. If you feed that fear, yes, it'll get off the chain. It'll get to a point where it's calling the shots instead of your fear, your faith. Amen? Whatever you feed, it grows. Whatever you starve, it dies. You starve that fear. You starve it through reading God's Word. You starve it by giving praise to God. You starve it by saying, devil, I rebuke you. The Bible says if you resist the devil, what does it say? He will flee from you. Amen? You resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. So when fear comes knocking, we know that's not God. Because he don't, he don't operate in the spirit of fear. Amen? Yes, he works in conviction. There's time when he troubles our heart to us to draw closer to him. But he does not operate through fear. That's a tool of Satan. Feed your faith with prayer and worship. And it's okay to wait on God. Amen? They waited. They said, Lord, we do not know what to do. But our eyes are on you. And God in his time brought direction. He used the old prophet. And he spoke. And it came to pass just as he said. He told him where to go and what to do. You know what? God will speak to us today. He's here. He's here this morning. He's here this morning. Amen. As Greg continues to play and sing. Thank you. 